What's up guys? Today I want to talk about the eBay's Authenticity Guarantee Program. If you guys don't know what that is, that's where if you sell a piece of jewelry or I'm sure other things, but this, in this case we're talking about jewelry, it gets sent to GIA in Carlsbad, California. And the, the headache that it caused me yesterday. And when I say headache, I mean a $1,200 swing of a headache. So we should probably talk about how this started. And it started about a week ago when I got an offer for 550 bucks, roughly, for a bracelet, 14 karat gold bracelet. And right after that, I got another offer for uh, almost 800 bucks. So it was right around $1,300, $1,300, dollars $1, somewhere around there. My math is a little fuzzy, I'm driving, I'm just trying, trying to think about too many things at once. But in any event, I took both offers, but the buyer had to pay both shipping because it had to get sent out to GIA, and they don't combine shipping when you're sending it to eBay's authentication system. Whatever. Um, so that's cool. The next day, I ended up selling a $700 ring that I had to send to the same place. Fast forward to yesterday, and one of the... So I get a little message saying that one of them was approved. That was a ring that sold the second day. And that's cool and all. And the next thing I know, I get, I'm walking through Walmart with my son. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of like blowing some time because my wife is doing some cleaning around the house. I want the kid to get out with me. So we went out to Walmart, walking around. And I went there to get trash bags. And I ended up getting this message. So I completely space out about the trash bags, but that's a whole nother topic. And uh, so I get this message saying that your bracelet wasn't authenticated. And I'm like, what the shit? You know, because, like, I don't buy these for cheap. Like, I'm not buying this bracelet for a dollar and flipping it for 550 bucks. Um, but in any event, I look into it. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I've never had this happen before. And so he's like, don't, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm disappointed, but this can be for a number of reasons. If it's, like, if the measurement's slightly off, they can deny it. If it, the carrot is, doesn't weigh up, they can deny it. And sure as shit, I get home. And I end up calling eBay, and you know what kind of hassle that is, trying to get a hold of somebody nowadays. But I end up getting a hold of somebody, and they end up telling me that that's exactly what it is, is that the carat on there was 13 carat, not 14 carat. Now, you know, I've been selling jewelry for a long time, and there's a difference, and you guys tell me down in the comments, you guys, how you guys think about this. But it's kind of an assumed thing in the jewelry business is where unless it says plum unless it has a p right after the k it could be anywhere between 12 and 14 or even 15 carat it's not an exact science especially when you're dealing with antique and handmade jewelry so you know it's 13 carat it's coming back to me it's a little bit it's a little bit disheartening and then ebay you know i'm talking to the ebay guy and he's telling me like listen when you get back he's got a list of his 13 carat who is looking for 13 carat? It's not a thing. It's not, it's not a thing. And like, I know that most people don't know this, but a lot of jewelry, that's why when you're buying gold and silver, and like, if you're selling gold and silver, this goes out to you guys too, is that it's not, that's why there's a cushion. That's why there is a cushion when you're buying jewelry is because A, there's burn off and there's also discrepancies in how much it is and like even though i acid tested it it didn't catch the discrepancy between 13 and 14 carat you know like that's it is what it is and i understand both sides i understand the buyer's perspective i understand you know you want to get what you're paying for i b believe me he was getting a very good deal on this bracelet is a fat chunky diamond bracelet for 550 bucks so that sucks right and I'm already wheeling in that whole hit because that's about $600. I just took a hit on, and then I get the next message. The next message basically says, your other necklace didn't pass the inspection as well. And at this point, I'm at a loss for words because this is a repeat buyer. I've told you guys, like a lot of my buyers are repeat people. And so this one, you know, it, it, it sucks. And so I, I, I'm like, I, don't, I tell them, like, I don't even know I'm at a loss for words. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, I don't know. There's no information because he gets information before I get information. And so he tells me that it's coming back to me. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm very sorry. I don't know what's going on at this point. And I'll get back to him as soon as, 
you know, I figure it out. I ended up uh, getting a call almost immediately after that from eBay saying that, so this is just, it's mind blowing. Uh, you know, I, I answer the phone and she says, hi, it's, you know, you know, so-and-so from eBay and that, uh, the, there's a problem with the bracelet is that when they were inspecting it, it fell apart. And I was like, well, hold, hold, what do you mean that it fell apart? And I don't know if she was like, if we were going to get to this point inevitably, or she was like roundabout feeling out the situation, but she was telling me like, yeah, it fell apart during inspection. I was like, well, hold on. So what you mean is that this place broke the bracelet that I sent to them. And she said, yes. And this is almost 800 bucks. And uh, she said, it's going to get sent back to you. And I'm like, well, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Like you guys broke it. Right. And so inevitably she ends up saying that they're going to cover the cost. Um, and I, and I don't know if they're still sending the neck, the bracelet back or what, but, uh, all right. So after I get off the phone with eBay, I end up texting the woman back and, you know, trying to explain to her, look, this was my fault. It, it, it broke while they were inspecting it. Uh, I don't even know what that means. You know, she said like there was, it can still be fixed, but you know, it was broken, whatever. And so I explained that to her. And at this point, as you can guess, I was ghosted nothing else. Our conversation never picked up. No other conversation afterwards. Like after the first bracelet, we were having some back and forth about what was going to happen after that. And I explained to her about 13 carat, whatever. And she was like, that's fine. But after the second bracelet, absolutely nothing. So it's, uh, it's a little disheartening when you have something like that happen. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that I was covered. Hopefully it stays covered. I don't know what they're going to inevitably do with the bracelet. If they're going to send it back or not, that's yet to be seen. I will let you guys know on a future video if that does come back. The other one is supposed to be back here and then I'm going to relist it. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to figure out a different way besides just saying 13 karat mail. Say it's marked 14, but is still 13. I don't really know. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about doing that. Probably going to I don't know. I'll probably uh, try to figure it out. But uh, in any event, that was the shit show of a day yesterday. Uh, we actually did end up selling a golf club. That golf club that I made a video of the other day that sold for 150 bucks. And then I also, in that same video, I was talking about soapstone sculptures. I sold one for 450 yesterday, but that has not been paid yet. So we shall see. But I'm about to go ahead in this place and go buy some silver and gold, hopefully, and I'll see you in the next one.